This is such a weird question. It's like an evidence pair, but not really. It's about the figure. This is just so weird. The SAT doesn't really do this very often, but here we are. It also is going to be a case where we kind of do need to go back to the passage. Another very rare thing for these figure questions. That's just, it's so strange. But that doesn't mean that it's much harder because when we do need to go back to the passage for these questions, it's almost always a hurdle that we need to get over, something very simple that we need to find, but we don't need to understand the passage inten intensely. So don't get bogged down in it, right? Just look for the thing that they're asking about. So in this case, they're saying, do the data in the table support the author's proposed pairings of bases in DNA? So that's what we need, the pairing. So we probably want to look for these kinds of words because they seem to be important in the chart. So even though we need to go to the passage, we're going to the chart first so that we know what to look for in the passage. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Okay, so let's take a look. We see them right here, right away. Adenine, guanine, or purines, thymine, and cytosine, or pyrimidines. Okay, so that seems important. Um, keep going, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't sound like a pairing, I guess. Um, um, look in 20, line 20, continuing along. Something about, oh, here we go. One member of a pair must be a purine and the other a pyrimidine in order to bridge between the two chains. So if a pair consists of two purines, for example, there would not be room for it. So, okay, that can help me. I can kind of summarize these two things, right? So I don't even know how I'm gonna do it. Uh, adenine and guanine, A and G equal purines, and thymine and cytosine equal pyrimidines, and one needs to go with the other. I don't know, let's, let's go here. So. Does that make sense? I don't know, there's just like numbers here. I don't know, let's look at the choices. Yes, because for each given organism, the percentage, the percentage of adenine is closest to the percentage of thymine. Okay, does, just that's a checkable thing, right? Go to, go to the thing and check that. So adenine and thymine are close to each other. 26.8, 27.2, yeah, it's pretty close. So this and this look close, this and this look close. 28, 28, 28, 28, 29, 30, 29, 29, 32, 32, 27, 27. So it's off, but look, I mean, it's all the way down. These are pretty darn close, right? They're close, not necessarily the same. Okay, and if you compare them to the other ones, look, you can see the other ones are way off, right? They're, they're closer to each other than they are to any of these. So yes, because for each given organism, the percentage of adenine is closest to the percentage of thymine. So that seems true. And the percentage of guanine is closest to the percentage of cytosine. Well, I did, just did that, right? Guanine and cytosine. So yeah, it seems close, seems close, seems close, seems close. Yep, these seem, these seem pretty good. So that tells me that the facts in this thing are true. Whether that's a yes or a no, I don't know. But look at the choices here. Here, they're measuring adenine and guanine. So we know that that's not true. We just showed the other one to be true. So this one is wrong regardless of the yes or the no, because the pairing, the way they're describing it, doesn't match with the numbers. So this goes to show, I just want to make a point here. Uh, let me just make sure I eliminate the right one. So here's adenine and thymine again. And then here's adenine and guanine, so that's wrong. So even if we'd never read the passage, if we had only looked at the numbers, then we would know that the uh, choices that can be that, that have to be right are either A or C. I don't know necessarily without the passage whether that those numbers support or contradict the, the author, but there's no way to, to look at B and D and, and think that that's right. The numbers just are wrong. So here's a good example. Yes, this is still very easy. We need to go to the passage to understand the final answer, but we can get a 50-50 shot without doing anything other than looking at numbers and being like, yeah, 28 is close to 28. Like, that's it. So does this support his pairing? Well, he, we're pairing adenine and thymine. And so yes, those two things go together because he told us that we need one of each, one purine, one pyrimidine. So it makes sense that those two would be paired. So the answer is A, it, it matches. And now that makes number 30 really easy. Which, according to the table, which of the following pairs of base percentages in sea urchins uh, DNA provides evidence in support of the answer to the previous question? So we're looking at sea urchins. And we're trying to look at those numbers and say, well, what, 
what supports it. So I'm gonna I'm glad I highlighted before, right? So the the two thirty twos go together or the two seventeens. So here we have the two seventeens. This is mixing, this is mixing, this is mixing. So there you go. It's choice A because those are the ones that matched according to choice A when we did the highlighting. So this is weird. This is a weird question. Um, normally they're not going to be this dense, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is the exception that kind of proves the rule, is that normally figure questions are pretty straightforward. You rarely need to go to the passage, and even when you do, even in this case, we didn't need to understand the passage. We just needed to find the basic fact that the chart is trying to ask about. So skim for that. It'll usually be easy to find because of the weird names, but it's not like you need to understand what you're reading. You just need to pull out that one fact that helps you answer the question. Trust the process on these figure questions. These are easy, even when they're hard.